we talk about Braden. I'm trying to think what did Braden do? Braden didn't really do nothing too bad this week. You know, some people will say, you know, say he may have fucked up, but I don't know. All right. Oh, yeah. Cooper Sacks, of course. Cooper Sacks is fucking Cooper Sacks. That's all you have to say. The first time we see Braden, he's in the room. He's packing up the North Face bag. This North Face bag go for about 120. If you go to the outlet, you can probably get it for like 84 99 but Tariq is on the bed and Braden is packing up. And we're like, okay, was Braden about to hit the gym or something? And Tariq is laying on the bed like, man, this shit crazy, man. Diana then got whooped on by a dirty cop. Diana then killed a dirty cop. Fuck, and now we working for a dirty cop. Man, it's out of control. Said, what, what the fuck are we going to do, B? Braden's like, I don't know what you're doing, but I got an Amiri sweater on. I'm about to go, 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 go try to get me some girls and I'm going to move out and go talk to L. I'm going to go see if I can move into L's dorm. Now, moving from dorm to dorm when you don't go to school here is crazy. But Braden wants to make it work with L. And once they throw that thing on you, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it's hard to separate. But Braden's not really hearing this. He's like, listen. I'm trying to go over L's house. Whatever you got going on with Don Carter. Remember, Don Carter recruited you, Diana, and Monet, and Drew. Braden's looking at it like, man, I, I fuck with you, Tariq, but come on, man. Don Carter didn't recruit me. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to... What do you mean, we, Tariq? What do you mean, we? Uh, we... <laughs> Stop with all this we shit. I was sleeping on the couch. I ain't have nothing to do with that. I'm making moves. Actually, I got F I got the damn knockoff course correct. I got all the campuses, bro. I'm getting money over here. What it do, pimping? You over here working for Don Carter. Look, Tariq working for Don Carter. Got to get leverage on Noma. We forgot to factor in that 35% for what Tariq is getting. But Braden is getting money that is untapped. They just need a supplier. They're supposed to be working for Noma. But he's like, look, I got the business from uh, Effie. Don't worry about how I got it. Just, hey, thanks, Braden. We got to give Braden some credit. Yeah, he did some wild shit to get it. But you got to give Braden some credit. It's not like Tariq is out here just moving course correctly. You know what I mean? Tariq is out here fucking up, too. Tariq? Yeah, Tariq. Tariq went to a house of a dead body. And then... I know well, we jumping around a little bit because all I could do is tell y'all what I saw. I'm not making any of this up. They said, Mo, here's the episode. What did you think? How is Tariq getting mad at Braden for catching a body when his baby mama caught a body less than 12 hours ago? Less than six hours. What time? This is about 8 35 in the morning. It's eight hours, about 12, 9, 10. 10 hours ago. Diana was standing over an officer. So Tariq can't get mad like. While you out here chasing after your baby mama, unalive and police officers, I'm getting money. I got the course correct and knock off course correct. So you got to give on a scale of one to 10. Braden getting course correct. We're just going to continue to call it course correct because it's like the concert shit. It's the knockoff version, but I'm not about to continue to say the knockoff version, of course, correct. It's just too much for your boy. What on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, what would you give Braden for getting the whole enterprise, of course, correct from Effie? A six, a six ain't bad. Six, eight. I was gonna say about a, I was gonna say about a five or six because he had to go break into a cop's house, so it's still kind of risky, but hell. It ain't like these niggas ain't just been killing motherfuckers. Whatever happened to Bash? Remember Tariq allegedly on the live Bash? I cannot confirm or deny that. Bash's body's just stanking somewhere. Like, none of these murders are being solved in New York City. It's just a wild, wild west up here. Tens. Come on, Patrice. Come on, Patrice. Patrice, you must have forgot that one in front. There's no way you get Braden a zero. He had to break into the cop's house. He had to put up with Kane. And he got all of it, not just Stansfield. He got all of it. That means up at uh, where was she at? Was she at Princeton? 
where the fuck she was at. He got all the colleges. I, I give him like a six because it was still risky. But he's like, Tariq, man, fuck all this. I'm going to L's room. And we know in power, whenever your back is against the wall, and I looked at the likes, and they're at 45, and we got 100 people in here. I feel like Braden right now. You know, y'all y'all my people. Y'all the Moets. But I feel like, man, fuck all that. It ain't no we right now. It's like y'all versus me. You know what I'm saying? We can get that thing up to like 70, 75 likes. Braden's like, man, look, Tariq, if you ain't going to acknowledge me and give me my props, then I'm dipping. I'm going over L's room. Plus, I can get some of that. Give me that honey love. You know what I'm saying? It's Friday night and I feel all right. The party's here on L side. So Tariq is like, man, we came back down from Don. Nigga, stop saying Don and stop saying us. That Don situation is you, your baby mama, your mama in law. And your goddamn brother. That ain't got nothing to do with it. It's the B, the R, the A, the Y. That ain't got nothing to do with Bray Bray. So Brayden daps him up and he goes over to L spot. <laughs> he goes over to L spot. I don't even know where that photo is, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I hate not having my damn slideshow. I feel naked well when Braden goes over there we've already discussed what's going on Bruce is having a party it looks like somebody set L up with some of that fentanyl a brick of fentanyl now it don't take much when it comes to fentanyl all jokes aside terrible so when you're taking these drugs you hear Kodak saying I knew the perk was fake but I still ate it don't because they're mixing it with fentanyl and it only takes a very, 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 with 10 more varies and another five varies on top of that, and then another varies X squared to kill you. So it's very, very small. Fitting all gets you up and out of here. But Brusandria is sitting in the room. Brain's like, man, I'm going to my girls. I'm getting my lady back. Let her know. Like, you know, I was on that last night, and man. Shit. Woo! She got your boy nose running. Ooh, wait! Damn, that shit hit the spot. I'm gonna get my girl back though. Brusandria opened the door. What the fuck you doing in here, Brusandria? What well, what the hell happened to L? Well, L in here. Toes just to stretched out. She got the big toe sticking straight up in the air, so you know she hit some of that good fit. Brady's like, call 911. Call 911. Bushandra's like, no, I ain't call 911. Nigga, I'm in here. I'm the supplier. I already set y'all up one time. So Bushandra leaves her best friend, her bandmate, laying in the bed on that fentanyl, knocked out, talking about she was good a minute ago. Did you hear how Bushandra explained this? Oh, she was good. She would just snort some coke. What? What? It wasn't, oh, she was good. She was just smoking a little bit of that marijuana in the back. Oh, yeah, she was good. She was just smoking. You know, she, she was just snorting some coke. That's just casual to y'all? She's in the back just getting it in. Woo. Shit. Woo. Ew, you okay? <coughs> Let me turn the music up a little bit. What the fuck is wrong with him? I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, what are you doing? A magic trick? And then. Bruce Sandra in there.
<laughs> oh shit. Hell, you good? Hell. You oh, she might be she probably just she probably just sleeping. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna hit you back though. We just chilling, vibing out, listening to music. Nah, Stokely, we'll hey, we'll be at rehearsal tonight. We just getting, you know, what I'm saying we getting, we getting folks right now. Nah, nah, nah. L sleep at the moment. Nah, I'm just smoking a little bit. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm fuck with you. We'll be down there, Stokely. All right. <laughs> It's Braden. Braden, who? Man, white boy Braden. Tariq, homeboy. Oh, Braden. Hold on. What you want, Brayden? Where's L at? Man, she's sleeping. How long she been asleep? Man, she said she was doing coke. She was all right. What do you mean she all right? Her lips dry as a motherfucker, man. Yeah, that's just what, what happened when you sleep with your mouth open. Uh, it don't seem like she's sleeping, man. Her eyes are open, too. She look like the Undertaker, Bushandria. Oh, man, I thought I was high. I thought she was playing around. <laughs> Call 911. Now, whoa, now, Brady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You to cross the line, partner. <laughs> you to cross the line. We got coke up in here. We got weed up in here. <laughs> Who that? I, I don't fuck with. Oh, oh, I don't fuck with 12 now. I ain't calling no police, Brady. You can get your police ass up out of here. That's that white people shit. You call the police. I'm a real nigga. I ain't calling no police. Brady's like, L is fucking dying. She's OD and she ain't sleep. What the fuck is wrong with you? Rashawn just said, well, that looks like my time to go. Let me get my notebook. Well, Brayden, I'm going to head on to class. You do what you got to do. And Bruchandra went on the class like nothing happened. This nigga Brayden got to goddamn take L to the goddamn hospital on his own. I said, what the fuck? Bruchandra in here just kicking it, smoking, chilling, talking all casual. Oh, man, she did. A, she said she was doing coke back there. She all right. She all right. What do you mean she all right? Let's see how all right she is. This is how this is how all right L is Braden down at the hospital. Now Braden it took her phone. Braden it took her phone and he's texting Steve talking about hey man where you at man? I need to get some of that work. He also calls up Tariq. Now the conversation between him and Tariq very casual. You got to remember they might be under surveillance. So it's just hey man yeah L she good because Tariq actually shows up down here and Tariq. Tariq is like the homeboy that doesn't know what to say. You know what I mean? Like, this is a true story. So one time, it's this dark road. And um, so my homeboy, when I switched schools, my homeboy, he was a year older than me. So it was him. It was two of them, him and his, his best friend. And then up under him, uh, he had a brother that was a grade up under me. And then his homeboy. So one night, I'm chilling at the crib. And my homeboy called me. I'm like, what's going on? They went and ran a two man. They went and ran a two man, right? But when they got there, the dude that called me, he called me like, hey, my, my homeboy, he walking down the street, man. He, he tripping. So I'm like, man, what the hell? It's probably about like one, two in the morning. It's dark as hell, too. I'm talking about pitch black on this robe down there. It'd be like fucking 
boxes and deer and shit just running around. So he like, yeah, man. I like, man, what the hell happened? It's probably like one in the morning. I'm like, man, what happened? He's like, man, we came over here run this too, man. You know, I had mine set up, but the friend wasn't really feeling the other homeboy, the one that walked off. So I'm like, God damn, man. But this shows you how <laughs> this shows you how fucked up the one that called me was. So I'm like, where he at now? He's like, man, he walking down the road, uh, down Byers. It's, it's probably like three, four miles, pitch black out there. It's like one light. And that motherfucker's like towards the intersection, but it's just dark as a bitch out there. So I'm like, damn, all right, all right, I'll, 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 I'll pull up. So it's probably like five minutes from the house. I, I drive down there. I got the high beams on. I'm looking. My homeboy walk. I'm like, hey, man, hey, hey, get in the car, man. So I pick him up. I take him to the house. And then, uh, so I already heard the story that the old girl, she wasn't really feeling him. And she ended up calling another dude over. So now it was five people over there, my two homeboys and two girls. But then they called another nigga over. So he ended up leaving. He was mad because, you know what I'm saying, he thought he was going to go over there. And I, I had him in my car, and I'm I, we outside in front of his house. So I'm talking to him, like, hey, man, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? And then this nigga started saying, man, you know, man, if I was, like, to die today, like, I don't think no hoes would show up to my funeral. In my mind, I'm thinking, nigga, that's the last thing you need to be thinking about, like, if it's your funeral, who gives a damn who's showing up to that motherfucker? First of all, they ain't gonna get like I didn't know what to say. So we sitting in the car and I'm like, man, it's cool, man. Don't don't like trip off of it. But I really didn't have the words because I wasn't prepared for what I was put into. You know what I mean? Cause I'm thinking I just gotta pick my homeboy up. He tripping, you know what I'm saying? Blowing off some steam, pause. I'm pick him up, take him to the crib, drop him off. I'm get back to my to my business. But I'm in the car with him for like 30 minutes. He talking to me like man. I don't know, like, who would show up to my... I'm like, nigga, who gives a shit who would show up to your funeral? Like, you're gone, man. Like, if them hoes are showing up now, they didn't give a fuck about you when you was here, but I couldn't say that. But I didn't know what to say. Man, I'm like 21 years old. I think it's some deep shit. Like, he, he's alive, you know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't... But it was like, damn... This is before like suicide was a big thing, but I'm sitting with him in the car and I'm like, damn, man, this nigga's on some serious. But I ain't know what to say. All I knew is like, all right, man, I can't let this nigga just go in the house. So I just talking to him out in the car, but I did not have the words to say. Like, that's a true story, man. Like, fuck. I was like, damn, that's messed up. But that's how Tariq was. Tariq came in here like, damn, L all right. Doctor said she might be all right, Tariq. She might not ever be able to walk again. That nigga Tariq said, oh, she'll be all right. Trust me, man. She'll pull through. And that nigga dabbed him up and left. Like, man, I got to go get on out of here. I got to go meet up with Davis. This nigga Tariq didn't know what to say. That nigga was just like, right, fuck it. <laughs> oh, man. He looked at the body. He was like, she'll be all right. <laughs> what he really wanted to say is niggas die every day, B. <laughs> But Tariq definitely didn't know what to say, man. But I had that, that was the first time I was ever in a moment, like a real world moment, where I didn't know what to say. You're like, man, if I die, like, wouldn't no girl show up to my funeral? But in my head, I was thinking, man, who cares, man? Like, you're gone. Like, if there are already decent chicks that show up, I'm going to be there. So just know that your homeboy going to get at something. But I couldn't say nothing like that because this is a serious moment. He was vulnerable at that time, Pauls. But that's just that's just uh, an example of what Tariq did when Tariq got in here. Tariq was like, uh, okay, yeah, she'll be all right, man. She'll pull through. She'll pull through. So Braden ends up texting Steve, and he's like, hey, man, we got to meet up. And he also convinces Tariq, hey, man, we just want to scare him. Zay, well, how am I sick? How am I sick? The fuck will I do? I picked him up. I can't be sick. I picked him up. He was walking down there. What if he got attacked by a deer or something? You know, deer be attacking in Missouri. Them motherfuckers don't play around. Them motherfuckers attack. Hit you with them antlers. Oh, it's over with. So I did a favor. So Tariq gets the message from Brayden. We just going to go scare this nigga Steve. They get up there. They got them told. That the pose was on them. Them pose without the extendos. They kicking the door. That's right. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. 
You sold my girl some dope. Tariq talking about, come on, B, we just going to scare him. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to scare him, all right. He said, you got fentanyl? He said, no, nah, I ain't got no fentanyl, man. I don't know what that is, man. I got that shit over there. It's, it's 70% pure. He's like, no, nah, that ain't that pure shit. My girl's in the hospital because of you, Steve. Steve is like, man, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is your girl? L. Oh, L. Oh, man. Nigga, L's everybody's girl. Man, I give L a little bag of that cocaine. L will go crazy. This ain't me talking, y'all. This is the TV show. Steve is like, L. Nigga, that's everybody's girl. You give L a little bit of, man, you give L a little bit, man, you better believe L about the act of food. I heard one story, man, this nigga gave L like, like a 20 piece. They said L was doing, y'all know my move, move 366. Where you jump off the bed and you, back of my younger day when I had a good hip, you jump off that bed. I call it move 366. You jump off the dresser. Woo! You, you know what I'm saying? You fall up in that thing. They said, L, you give her a bag of that. Oof. L will go crazy. So Steve was like, wait, 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 Brayden. Wait, that's everybody, girl, man. But I didn't give her no fit. No, man, I got this 70% right here. So Brayden's like, oh, hell no. Try it. So Brayden. He owned that shit too, but he just did a little bit just to take the edge off. Because, you know, sometimes you got to take the edge off. So he slammed Steve's head into it. Steve like, oh, shit. He on his Tony Montana right now. Whoa, oh, oh, wait. Brayden like, that ain't it. That ain't enough. Do it again. Do it again. So Brayden slammed his head in there again. Tariq like, man, what the fuck? This is that white on white crime they be talking about. They always talk about black on black crime, but this white on white crime a little bit different. These motherfuckers get high together and then they do this. So Braden has slammed his head into this motherfucker three times. Bow, bow, bow. His nose is bleeding and shit. Now you can't resell that product because Tariq and Braden do need that product. But now he throws Steve on the couch. And, oh, you want to pay for this one? And I'm thinking we just going to scare him. But out of nowhere, Braden actually uses the tool leaf. Pop, pop. Oh, man, what the? And Tariq gets mad. All right. Was Tariq right or wrong for getting mad at Braden for doing this? Yes, it is sloppy. And he did say this is how we'll get caught. Maybe that was foreshadowing. But was Tariq wrong? Because like you said, Zay, Tariq doesn't have any reason to be mad. Tariq didn't do it. Braden did it. I just, I showed up and I was trying to stop Braden. Hey, Braden, no, don't do that. So if Tariq was right to be mad at Braden, why wasn't anyone saying Tariq should have slapped the fire out of Diana when she unalived the cop? Last week when Diana unalived the cop and Tariq showed up, Everyone said that Diana was dumb and no one said anything about Tariq except for me saying Tariq shouldn't have answered that phone call. But why when Brayden does it, it's okay for Tariq to get mad. But when it was Diana pulling Tariq into a homicide, it was, oh, Diana's silly. They're just hanging out. Oh, my bad, Tariq. I got you involved in a homicide. Well, Braden took it to the extreme, and I'm with y'all. If I'm Tariq, I'm slapping the hell out of Braden. I'm, hey, Braden, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Braden took it to the extreme. And then you know he's still coked up because he shows up. Look at L. L getting up. The nurse is like, here you go, L. Braden's like, don't worry about it. Here's your phone that I stole from you. I actually text the plug, but you ain't got to worry about him giving you none of that bad fentanyl ever again. And I was like, wait, fentanyl? Steve didn't... Steve didn't do that. Brandon's like, oh, yeah, Steve did do that, but don't worry about it. You'll never see him again, and no one else will get hurt. She's like, what do you mean? He's like, I hand...
I handled it. I mean, it's my bad, L. Yes. You weren't lying. This ain't no fit. This is actually kind of pure. I handled it, L. You won't have to worry about that ever again. She's like, what do you mean you handled it? It's good. It's good. He's gone. She's like, I didn't I didn't ask you for that, Brayden. He's like, don't worry about it. You in good hands, baby. Brayden, are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Just long night. <sighs> you think they got some perks in here? El was like, Brayden, just leave. I didn't want anything to do with this. And Brayden just threw his life away. Now, I don't know if they're going to get caught up with this shit, but that's pretty much it for Brayden right there. Brayden did fuck up, man. Did he drop the ball? I won't say he dropped the ball as bad as Busandra because El would have died if it wasn't for Brayden. So we got to give him at least one point for that. But Brayden is wilding out, man. Brayden is wilding out. And you know my slogan, once a junkie, always a junkie. So Bobby Brown and Whitney, these two can stay together because neither one of them I see recovering. And that's Braden's story. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing else. Like Kendall said, I Braden can go. There's really nothing else for Braden to do. Like, what, what else can Braden do? Like, what... What can we do with his storyline? He doesn't he doesn't have college. He doesn't have a job. His family don't fuck with him. L don't fuck with him. He's living in Tariq's room. Tariq is about to graduate. What what is left for Braden? Your Braden need money. Braden need a job. No, I'm not saying Braden is dying. I believe that Braden and Tariq are both going to make it out of this season. But I'm saying, what is Hey man, you think you can plug me in with uh with Tommy? Send me out to Chicago, go hang with. Well, they only got a season left too, so you can't go out to Chicago. Oh, hey, hey after you going to Stanford? Hey, is it cool if I come out there and just crash in your room for a little bit? Oh, I can't. Damn. Damn. I guess Brady just got to continue to throw parties. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. That's Braden's story. Who we got next, man? Who we got next? We off the clock now. Who we got next, though? Who do you think is more likely to recover, Braden or L? If there was another season, or we could we could say there's a fairy tale, who do you think is more likely to recover, Braden or L? 